Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling. My name is Julian. I'm going to be your facilitator for this evening. I'm going to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. This is powered by StriveScan. And if you have any questions, you can uh, pop those into the Q&A chat box throughout the evening. If, uh, if anything comes to mind at all, we encourage you to always throw it in there. We have somebody who wants to answer that question. Just make sure that you address the institution that you would like to answer that question. Your camera and microphone are off throughout the evening. So all you have to do is sit back, relax and enjoy the information. There are no more sessions for this fair. This fair is over after tonight, but you can always check out any recorded sessions by going to strivescan.com slash RMACAC within about a week. So we're going to get started with our first presenter for the evening, and I'm going to stop my screen share to allow them to get theirs up and running. That is going to be the University of Illinois at Chicago. So once they get their screen share up and running, you are free to start asking any questions, any presenters at any time throughout the session. So we'll leave the floor over to you, UIC. Thank you so much. So welcome to participants. I always kind of like to start with a showcase of our 240 acre campus, which is right on the heart of downtown Chicago, close to transportation, lots of intern locales, etc. My name is Nita and I am happy to manage West Coast recruitment for UIC as we call the University of Illinois Chicago. We're kind of just going to discuss admissions, paying for college and in a slight Q&A but I want you all to know it's okay to ask questions a million if need be. This is a huge decision. We know that parents, et cetera, are involved. So we're happy to assist you. The best way to reach me directly is admissions at usc.edu and I do check my inbox. I'd like to add this picture because people do forget that Chicago has beaches and sun and <laughs> lots of sunshine, not just winter storms. So we have four seasons. USC as a whole is lo located in the West Loop of Chicago. Um, we're, we have a free concert called Spark in the Park. We're surrounded by um, the Bulls, Blackhawks stadiums, Beyonce concerts. So we're kind of right in the heart of everything, guys. We also have an event called LOL at UIC, which is a free comedy event. We had Sean, Marlon Wayans, really big acts. You don't need a car really coming to UIC. We have a U-Pass, which gets you around town, anywhere you want to go into um, <laughs> fun locations, school locations, internships, et cetera. And then we're, we're within um, about 45 minutes of two airports. So you're only about three and a half, four hours from home. So just some things to keep in mind besides our museums, comedy shows, shopping, et cetera. Just like to give you a baseline for the city. This is kind of a whole view of the city as I like to describe it. And as you can see, so much to do. And if you do stay in one of our free dorms, which you don't have to freshman year, which is pretty rare, you get free laundry. So that's definitely a perk. So moving on to us, we're number 52 public best college, most transformative, top 10 value, Wall Street Journal. So we have a lot of accolades behind us. About 21,000 undergrad students, one of the largest medical schools in the nation. We've been coined the medical district. Um, we do have all sports, NCAA except for football. And there are a lot of reasons to come to us to ignite your passion. Diversity is so diverse at USC, we actually don't even have numbers for it, believe it or not. But these are some of the accolades. Um, premier campus for LGBTQ students, 31% first generation, 57 different languages spoken. So lots of reasons to come to USC. Um, these are some more of them, 40% are first generational students also. Our student faculty ratio is still about 18 to one. We wanna give you that one that one-on-one -on -one support that you would like. This is one of our dorms, but again, we have eight. This one called the ARC has a Starbucks, pretty fancy, and housing.usc.edu is where you can view all of our dorms. We always promote that students do social good. So this is a campus project in the Pilsen area, but we do have 400 student clubs. So if you're nervous about meeting friends, et cetera, you definitely will be able to find some friends there. We're big on research, $412 million, which turns into grants and scholarships for students. We have a $2,500 um, grant called Lasuri that you all can participate in, even if you're not a science major. And we're one of the top 200 research institutions. We do utilize the Common app. And for this part, you're welcome to email me at admissions at uic.edu. We're still open for applications. They reopen them. So they close May 1st. So let me know if you have an issue getting it in. These are some of the requirements. And we are test optional. We also have an app fee or waiver. This is for first year students. For transfer students, 
definitely contact me because it can be a little confusing, but we use transferology and you do get a degree audit after applying, but you will use our web application and send us your transcripts. It's a pretty easy process, but the transferology part might be a little confusing, which is why I can explain it. Usually your out of state credits won't show on that website. So that's why it can be confusing. But once you apply transfer students, we do an audit. These are some of our deadlines for you guys. And again, let me know, COVID has shifted some of these deadlines. So let me know if you need help applying. I'm happy to put in a word for you or assist you. As far as financial aid, the biggest scholarship for my out-of-state students is the merit scholarship, which makes tuition comparable, especially for California students with what they'll pay in state. We do lock in tuition for four years, guys, also. So that's huge. A lot of schools don't do that. I was an out-of-state um, student and had a bad experience. So I'm glad to see that USC locks in tuition and that it doesn't shift abruptly. But these are just some general costs without financial aid. Um, our FAFSA code for you guys who are still applying is 001776. And these are some of the major scholarships that you can look forward to. We also have other scholarships, which I'm happy to email you, need-based aid, merit-based aid, et cetera. So if you have any questions, admissions.usc.edu is our main website. You can email me at admissions.usc.edu and I'll definitely check it. And then discover.usc.edu is where you can find presentations in our chat room. So I am actually going to turn this back over to Julian, but thank you so much for your time, guys. Awesome, thank you so much. We're gonna move on to the next presenter, Pacific Lutheran University. We're gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running. And while they do, if there's any questions that you would like to throw into the Q&A chat box, we want to encourage you to go ahead and do so, but we're going to leave the floor over to Pacific Lutheran University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kaylee Sadoff. I am a regional admission director for Pacific Lutheran University. I use she, her pronouns, and today we're going to be talking about PLU. Uh, PLU is a private liberal arts school up in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I'm actually from Colorado, like all of you joining us tonight, uh, and so I had no idea where Tacoma was. Tacoma is down here. It's about an hour drive south of Seattle, about 40 miles from the airport. We are the closest school to Mount Rainier, and we're close by Olympia, the capital city of Washington State. There is so much to do around PLU. Uh, within an hour or two, you can go skiing. You can be on the Olympic Peninsula, which is a rainforest. You can be on Mount Rainier. There's just a lot to do in that Tacoma area. Um, an overview of our student body. PLU has 3,100 total students. So it's definitely on that smaller side. Uh, we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio and our average class size is 20 students. That means that your professors know who you are. Um, so when it's time for letters of recommendation, if you're looking at graduate programs, if you just need an extra set of hands, uh, an extra support in your classes to make sure you succeed, that is built into our student body. 38% uh, of PLU students identify as students of color. One third of our student body are first generation college students. Uh, and then I'll talk more about the application itself, but we use your average weighted GPA. So the average weighted GPA for our incoming students is 3.7. PLU offers about eight different academic schools and divisions. Uh, these include our division of humanities. So this is where you'll find philosophy, religion, uh, Lashutsi, different languages, uh, natural sciences, which is where you'll find our pre-professional health programs, biology, chemistry, geology, uh, social sciences includes our criminal justice program, psychology, sociology, we have our School of Arts and Communication. Uh, one thing of note within our School of Arts and Communication is that you do not have to major or minor in the arts to participate. Uh, if you are auditioning for a theater role and you're the best person for that role, regardless of your major, you will be cast in that role. Uh, we have a great school of business just in the part of the country that we're located. Uh, the CEO of Alaska Airlines is a PLU alumni, so is one of the co-founders of Healy's. Uh, and so there are a lot of opportunities for you to do internships and get to know business alumni and professionals and network in that realm. We also offer a school of education and kinesiology. So if you're interested in exercise science, um, pre-athletic training, any of our education programs, and then a strong school of nursing, and interdisciplinary programs. Just recognizing that we are a liberal arts school, you can't have humanities without languages, without social sciences and everything else in between. 
We are a division three school, which means that all of our scholarships are based on academics and financial needs. So we do not offer athletic scholarships. However, we've won over 250 conference championships competing against other schools in the Northwest Conference. We offer 19 varsity division three sports. Uh, we have over 70 clubs on campus and it's really easy to start your own if there's not a club that you'd like to be a part of. Uh, these range from our academic clubs to our justice clubs, to different support groups, political groups. Um, there is a great way for you to get involved among all of these 70 clubs. <laughs> Uh, we are in the top 20 nationally for the highest percentage of students who study abroad. Uh, that's not 20%, that is top 20. Over 50% of our students study away or study abroad. Uh, we do offer domestic programs, just recognizing that we can still learn from the people in our country. Uh, you still have the opportunity to travel around the country and world. Uh, your financial aid applies for our study away programs. Um, you have a Center for Global Education to partner with you to make sure you'll get credit for your classes, uh, to make sure that you have housing to give you a monthly meal stipend. So you truly just get to show up and be a student and build community in another part of the world. Um, as far as the PLU application goes, we are on the Common App. It is completely free to apply. Uh, there are five components of the application. We look at your transcript. So through the end of your junior year, typically, uh, we see your letters of recommendation. Uh, those come from or from teachers, excuse me, uh, but also from counselors or bosses or mentors or coaches. Uh, we read your essay, we see your application, and then we are test optional. So if you choose to send in test scores, we will absolutely consider those for admission or for scholarships. Uh, but about five years ago, we made the transition to being test optional, just recognizing that not everyone has access to prep classes. Not everyone has time to take the test. Maybe you have a crappy Saturday or a softball tournament or a theater production the night before. Uh, and so we don't require those test scores for scholarships or for uh, admission. We are on a rolling application cycle, so we are still accepting applications for fall 21, um, but we will start reviewing those applications August 1st once the Common App opens up. And we do grant up to 30 semester hours for AP, IB, other college level courses you take in the high school. Uh, as a private school, we don't have in or out of state tuition. It's the same across the board. And so it is kind of a scarier big number, uh, but we also are able to offer a lot of financial aid and scholarships. Uh, based on your GPA and test scores, if you send them, you're qualified for up to $27,000 a year for academic scholarships. We offer presidential scholarships for students who are particularly involved in their communities, at their school, um, who are leaders um, in their communities. We also offer fine arts scholarships. So again, you don't have to major or minor in music or theater to participate. You can still get those fine arts scholarships. And then we have yellow ribbon scholarships for qualified veterans or their dependents. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions and I will pass it back to you, Julia. All righty, thank you so much. We're gonna move on to our next presenter, University of Alaska Anchorage. And while they get their screen share up and running, just wanna to continue to encourage any questions that you have, you can throw in the Q&A chat box. Uh, UAA, you are on the clock. Hey everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. I'm really excited, excited to present to you a little bit about the University of Alaska Anchorage. Remember that we cannot fit all of the great things about any of our schools in six minutes. So this is definitely an invitation to learn more. I will start by telling you a little bit about Anchorage, Alaska. So we are the largest city in Alaska, approximately 300,000 people. So you're certainly not in the middle of nowhere. We consider ourselves to be in what we call the urban wild. So yes, you have access to shopping, dining, entertainment, a bit of a downtown, but also the Iditarod goes right through our downtown. And you can see all of the beautiful nature that Alaska is known for take a trip to see the glaciers or the Northern Lights, and there's 100 plus miles of trail that intertwine throughout the city. Uh, on campus, you'll be a part of a thriving community of nearly 12,000 students. Uh, it is the largest public uh, university in Alaska, um, but we maintain our small class sizes. So we have a one to 16 faculty student ratio, which means that about half of your classes have less than 20 students which is pretty unheard of for a big public uh, comprehensive university. And we think that that's one of the reasons that we are ranked number one for a long-term return on investment amongst our peer institutions. 
which essentially means that we do a really good job of balancing quality and affordability. So you might be wondering if we have the program that you're looking for, and in all likelihood, yes, because we are a larger uh, comprehensive university, we have a wide breadth of program offerings. So if you're a student that is not entirely sure what you want to study, it's a great idea to go to a university that has a lot of different offerings like UAA. Uh, but if you know exactly what you want to study, um, definitely check out our website to check that you're in there, but we do have distinct colleges for things like business, um, engineering, health sciences, humanities, uh, social sciences and arts, uh, and then also even technical education. And so having those distinct colleges really helps us develop our advising infrastructure to help students really find their path um, and balance um, kind of all of their options to really find the major that fits them well. And across all of our programs, we really value experiential learning. So you can study natural sciences in nature. Uh, for example, our geology students, uh, one of their courses actually helicopters them to the site location. You can't do that at just any university. Uh, we also have some really interesting elective courses and things like ice climbing and dog sledding. Uh, of course, you can't major in those things, but you can learn to do um, some of these more extreme uh, activities safely um, through the university while you're there. And then one thing I really like to highlight for my out of state students is that you are considered a WUBI student, which can be confusing when you go to the website because you'll see out-of-state tuition and you'll see WUBI tuition. So it's really important that you remember that you are a WUBI student coming from a Western state because the tuition difference is really large. And because the University of Alaska Anchorage is an open access university, we honor that mission uh, by awarding WUBI tuition to all of our students from Western states. There's no additional GPA requirement or program restrictions. So when you go to apply, you already know that you're going to be a WUBI student and be getting uh, this tuition, which is honestly comparable to in-state tuition in a lot of the Western states. And then I would be remiss if I didn't highlight some of our exciting opportunities for adventure outside of Alaska, because I know that my students that are coming from out of state are probably looking for an adventure. You can definitely find that on campus in Anchorage, uh, but you can also take that adventure all over the world by joining a semester away or a couple semesters away. Uh, we have a special partnership called the North to North Exchange. So if you're interested in Arctic research, we're a great place for that. We also participate in national student exchange. So you, you can do a semester in Hawaii, Las Vegas, or Puerto Rico, lots of different places for essentially the same tuition that you're paying at UAA. You don't have to worry about rebudgeting. So again, this is just an invitation to learn more. I hope that you will join us for some of our cool virtual events that we've developed throughout the year. One of our virtual events uh, series is called Fireside Chats, where you can actually meet um, faculty and students and staff from campus and ask them what it's like to go to UAA. You can, of course, do a virtual tour online. You can schedule a one on one with an admission counselor and myself, and we will go through the virtual tour with you and a more in depth presentation. So, lots of ways to get involved. Do remember that our applications are rolling, which means that you can still apply for our fall admissions. Uh, we don't require standardized test scores. At the moment, there isn't even an application fee. Uh, so if you want to submit, I invite you to do so. I will link the information for you in the chat so that uh, you can see where to go. And I look forward to helping you become future Seawolves. All righty, awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to our next presenter, Eastern Washington University. We're going to allow them to get their screen share up and running. And while they do, just want to continue to encourage you to check out our sessions by going to the strivescan.com website. And I'll leave the floor over to you, Eastern Washington University. Thanks, Julian, and thanks to my fellow presenters. You guys are doing an awesome job. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming out tonight to join us and for those watching the recording. Hello. Um, my name is Jennifer and I'm an assistant director of recruitment for Eastern Washington University. 
Um, what you can see in front of you here is our online lookbook. And what I would recommend that you do is just grab this URL and bookmark it if you can. Um, there's a lot of good, useful information here, including some links out to important pages. Um, so definitely save that uh, for future reference because I won't be able to, of course, cover everything today. Just to give you a quick overview, if you don't know anything about Eastern, we are located um, in a small college town called Cheney, Washington. And of course, it's in the eastern side of Washington State. And if you don't know anything about Cheney, that's perfectly fine. Um, most people don't. We are located just outside of Washington State's second largest city of Spokane. Um, we do have a pretty large airport here. Uh, and just to give you kind of an idea, it takes uh, a couple hours to fly from like Denver, for example, and just a few hours to fly from Phoenix. So not too bad. Uh, we're, we're a medium-sized university. We have about 12,000 total students currently, um, and that in, does include our master's level students. And if you're counting and if you care, we do have about 2,000 total squirrels as well. Um, something that really sets Eastern apart um, is that we really pride ourselves on our commitment to community and just making sure that you're successful um, during your time here as a student. So, you know, anybody from, let's say, like the janitor up to the president is really going to be invested in making sure that you're doing well, both in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. And because of that, you'll really feel this true sense of family and community. And that's something that I, I hear over and over from our current students and alumni. You know, they really feel like Eastern was a second home for them. And that's why they were basically able to succeed while they were here. In terms of our programming, Eastern has um, almost 150 programs for you to choose from. So we have a lot. And while all of our programs are great, um, one that I did want to highlight is our forensic science program. Um, the forensic science program is really unique at Eastern because it's in connection and in partnership with the Washington State Patrol Crime Lab. And if you don't know what that is, that's basically just any crime that um, any crime that gets committed in Washington State Patrol jurisdiction, the evidence for that crime is sent to this lab for analysis, and our students get to basically help with that because the lab is located right across the street from our campus. Um, and so because it's right there, you know, our students are getting hands-on experience working on for real forensics for real crimes. So really kind of giving them an, an edge in the job market as well. You can see here our top five majors. Um, so we're pretty strong in our health sciences and STEM fields, as you can see. Um, like I mentioned before, Eastern is pretty ideally located. We're uh, rural, we're urban, um, so you really get the best of both worlds here. And that's one thing I just love about this area is that um, kind of balance. And so, you know, the same time it might take for you to, to get to um, your favorite hiking spot or maybe your favorite lake or even skiing, you can be at your favorite um, coffee shop or to a Broadway show. Um, so really depending on your mood for the day, you're gonna have plenty of choices. And then just in general, the Eastern and Cheney area really is a safe and welcoming community, both on campus or off campus. So it's really easy to connect, um, connect with and to meet people. So on campus, you know, whether it's sports you're into, we, we are a division one school, um, whether that's sor sororities and fraternities, you know, gaming, um, something else, there's definitely plenty of ways for you to meet friends and, and just people who are into the same things as, things as you in general. And then in, in addition to our almost, last time I checked, it was almost 200 student clubs and organizations, we have an award-winning recreation center as an ice rink, a climbing wall, as you can see here. We have a brand new student union building here in these um, middle images. We also have loads of student services to offer you. Um, we've got, you know, a multicultural center, a pride center, um, career center, disability support services, and the list goes on and on. Uh, we also have a campus in Spokane, and I just wanted to touch on that briefly because I'm really excited about this building right here. Yes, I am excited about a building. It basically is um, pretty unique because it is a net zero um, energy footprint. And so it makes it one of the most sustainable buildings in the whole country. Um, so I'm super proud that Eastern is part of it. It's gonna 
It actually is home to several of our programs, including some of those top five ones that you saw earlier, like business and computer science, um, as well as some others. And I did want to just touch briefly on cost. Um, I know that's important for you as you're searching for colleges, um, but for in-state students, Eastern is the most affordable school of the public universities um, in Washington state, but for uh, students coming from certain states such as yours, uh, we do also offer what, uh, the WUI, it was mentioned earlier. And the full WUI scholarship for us is about $15,000 and it brings your tuition down pretty close to what in-state students pay. Um, what's great about it is it is awarded automatically. So there's not really any additional application you need, to, you need to fill out. You basically just submit your application for admission and you're automatically reviewed. So just in knowing a little bit more about our community, our costs, our programs, um, just wanted to briefly touch on next steps for you. You can apply. Um, of course, our fall 21 application is still open. Uh, for fall 22, that will open up on August 1. So again, please make sure to bookmark this so you can be up to date. Um, from here, you can also explore our programs using our Program Explorer tool. And what I would recommend actually that you do at this step is to sign up for a tour. Um, we offer virtual tours um, Monday through Friday, and we just opened up for in-person tours as well. So that would be my recommendation for you if you're feeling brave, you can come on down and take an in-person tour as well and see if Eastern would be a good fit for you. So that's it for me. I really hope to see you at Eastern sometime in the future. And thanks again and go eat. Awesome, thank you so much. We're gonna move on to another presenter, Texas A&M University, Galveston. We're gonna allow them to get their screen share up and running. And while they do, if there are any recordings that you want to check out, you can go to strivescan.com and all the recordings from this session will be uh, available within about a week. So we'll leave the floor over to Texas A&M. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll start off with a video. The ocean is a wondrous world, teeming with life, mystery, and adventure yet 95% remains unexplored. At Texas A&M Galveston, we teach and inspire through the tradition of Aggie values, tomorrow's marine scientists who explore, research, and protect our oceans, wetlands, shores, and sea life. Engineers whose careers can take them from land to the seas and the depths below. Business administrators who manage ports, shipping, and logistics around the globe. And ship's officers who sail the world, transporting goods and people. Or serve our country in the Navy and Merchant Marine. Earn a degree from Texas A&M Galveston and unlock the career opportunities of the Earth's vast oceans. Texas A&M University at Galveston. Education, tradition, adventure. All righty, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to uh, look at that. Um, howdy, my name is Yuri Mendez. Uh, I am a uh, student ambassador at Texas A&M Galveston. Uh, we are the CIGs, as we like to call ourselves. We are a uh, smaller branch of uh, the main campus, which is Texas A&M College Station. Um, and uh, we are, in general, our, our focus um, is we are a uh, ocean-based uh, focused campus. Uh, we have a very uh, small student to faculty ratio. We're about 16 to one, which is very good. It gives you a lot of personal interaction and time with your professors, all of them you will be called by name, you're not just a number here. So um, the we offer about 13 or so degree programs. Um, and these are, as uh, I mentioned, all, uh, ocean oriented. Um, among the ocean sciences, we have marine biology, uh, which is the study of marine life. Um, it is a biology degree, so it can be used in other areas. Um, for uh, example, vet school, if you want to go to vet school, you can also work as a game warden or work in a zoo. 
uh, treating uh, terrestrial animals as well. Uh, or you can work uh, in the conservation area as well. So um, within the marine fisheries, we offer uh, things like uh, culture, uh, culture and fish. Um, you can also do game warden as well. Um, and this is a double major with marine biology, if you like. So uh, within the marine sciences, we have uh, things like um, if you wanted to study in the physical side of the ocean, um, you know, do underwater cave systems, uh, underwater volcanoes, uh, trenches. Um, I'm sure you all know what the Marianas Trench is, one of the deepest parts of, of our ocean, which is hardly explored. So there's a lot of opportunity for exploration there. Um, but then our coastal environmental and science uh, and society, we have an environmental science degree. Um, that is an environmental science degree. And you look at things like uh, development of marine and coastal resources, uh, things like oil spills, uh, how the weather, uh, weather affects the environment. So a lot of uh, many of our graduates either focus on the science part or they can go and work with uh, industry leaders, uh, Shell and whatnot. And, and also uh, they, they provide empl employment for a lot of our scientists. Uh, within the maritime industry, we also have uh, maritime uh, administration or maritime business administration. Uh, and this is the port management, among other things that deal with the maritime focus and logistics. It is a business degree. Uh, so compared to other business schools though, where you would get kind of a general focus, this is a very uh, niche of ours that we have. And it certainly gives you the um, upper hand um, in a lot of uh, job applications. Um, you get to do, you know, things like uh, look at inland waterways, uh, management, chartering, uh, transportation, uh, economics, and such. With, uh, we also offer uh, mar uh, marine transportation. Uh, this are the students who are interested in captaining their own ships, uh, not their own, but certainly uh, industry ships. Uh, cruise captains, uh, things that uh, people who work in fields are ones that are bring goods from all over the world. As you all know, uh, logistics has been something that's been hard hit. And so it's on everyone's radar. We also offer marine engineering and technology. So um, these are, you know, if a ship breaks down, these are the guys that are not necessarily captain in the ship, but certainly make it run. Um, our ocean engineering as well. This is our civil mechanical electrical and naval architecture engineering program. Um, this you can start here and then move on to College Station 4 on main campus. Uh, we also have the liberal studies, which is maritime studies, uh, university studies, which is a concentration. Um, we offer marine environmental law and policy, uh, tourism and coastal community development, ocean and one health, which is a pre-med or pre-vet uh, um, or pre-dental program if you wish to go that route as well. So um, it is offers a three plus two program, uh, which this means that the student can be get a bachelor's and a master's in five years. We offer that also in the business side as well as a license option. We offer a few minors, uh, diving in technology and methods, uh, scuba diving and whatnot. Um, so you can get certified that way. Um, we also do, uh, our study abroad program is very strong. Uh, we have Aggies all over the world. Uh, as you saw in that video, that Aggie ring opens up a lot of doors in our Aggie network. So, pardon, um, involved in research. Uh, so I'll be dropping a link. So you can, are more than welcome to come visit us and look into our application process. Um, so once again, thank you for visiting us and Gigum. Awesome, thank you so much. And moving on to our last presenter for the evening, Kansas State University. So we're gonna allow them to get the screen share up and running. But since this is our last presenter for the evening, just want to encourage to sign up, uh, or I'm sorry, to uh, put in any questions you have in the Q&A or go ahead and visit us at strivescan.com to review any of the sessions that you have missed. Uh, we'll leave the floor over to you, Kansas State University. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, as he mentioned, I um, er, I work for Kansas State University, or K-State for short. Uh, my name is Chase Wynn, and I'm actually uh, your regional admission representative for the university. Um, but for those of you that are unfamiliar with K-State, um, I like this slide. It talks a little bit about some quick facts about K-State. We are a land-grant university. Um, D1 uh, institution located in Manhattan, Kansas, a classic college town known as a Little Apple, um, as compared to the Big Apple. 
Um, but everything about the university is focused on the undergrad experience, whether that's our over 250 different majors and programs, 500 different clubs, to even sitting mid um, court or at the 50 yard line at our football games, it's really focused around that student experience. And I think some of the rankings you see here are a testament to that. So this past year, we were ranked um, happiest students by the Princeton Review or um, top three um, for students that love their university. And so what the experience you get at K-State is really focused around um, that classic college experience and undergrad experience. But not only are you being prepared or not only are you getting an experience while in school, you're also being prepared for afterwards. So you'll see we have a 97% job placement rate um, and one the number one starting salary in the state of Kansas and one of the largest in the uh, Midwest. And so um, you're getting that experience while at K-State and also afterwards. As I mentioned, we are a D1 institution with about 22,000 students, but our student to faculty ratio is still 18 um, to one. So you still have that one-on-one -on -one time um, with your professor, um, to ask those questions or make that relationship. Um, but that's a quick overview of K-State, but I also want you to start thinking about what your experience is gonna look like. Um, so at K-State, we have over 250 different majors and programs. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways for you to build um, your academic experience. Some of our larger ones um, that we see a lot of out-of-state students hit are our College of Architecture is consistently top 10 um, nationally, top five regionally, and they're a five-year master's program. Um, and um, some of their programs that I, we highlight are general architecture, interior architecture and industrial design, landscape architecture, regional community planning. Um, but one thing I'm really jealous about for our architecture students is we just finished up building a new renovation um, in the past two years. And so all of our students have their own studio space. They have a 12,000 foot fabrication lab. So you get a lot of cool hands-on opportunity. Our College of Business is a direct entry business school. And so you're in the classes of your major starting that very first semester. Um, and because of some of these free resources and mentorships or mentorships from um, industry leaders, um, our College of Business has been ranked as a top 30 best business school to hire from by Bloom, uh, Bloomberg's um, Business Week. Um, another one to highlight is our College of Vet Med. Um, so we're the eighth oldest and top four ranked. Um, so very well established, um, but students um, can get exposure to not only um, domestic animals, but also large aquatic and um, exotic animals as well. And then finally, the last one I wanna hit on, our College of Engineering. Um, we have 12 ABET accredited programs and so a wide variety within that. Um, but that allows you to start thinking about your academics and how you'll get involved there. Um, but our students are involved outside of the classroom just as much as they are involved inside the classroom. So you'll see that we offer undergrad um, research opportunities. Students starting their very first week freshman year can get involved in research and be in the labs to see what does it look like um, to do that work. If you're unsure if research is up your alley, we even have um, short-term research opportunities that are 10 weeks long to see what does it look like and allows you to get your feet wet before committing to a long-term research project. Across campus, we have over 500 different clubs and organizations, ones that have to do with your major. So agriculture, agriculture, agriculture clubs, education clubs, um, to clubs that are out there. We have skydiving, we have a Harry Potter club, um, but I always like to talk about getting involved because that was one of my favorite experiences at K-State and getting plugged into campus. And then finally, um, Greek life um, is another big part of involvement um, in and outside of the classroom. But another thing I mentioned earlier is we are a land-grant institution. And so we stay true to some of those roots and um, we focus on affordability for students. So while at K-State, there's a lot of different opportunities to help pay for school. Um, we have our general university scholarships awards and tuition waivers um, for students that apply. Um, we have our um, Founders Non-Resident Merit Award that I'll talk about later, but that can get to around fourteen dollars to $15,000 a year to help bring down um, that tuition. We are test optional as well, so students have the opportunity to um, apply for scholarships as well as general admission if they haven't had the opportunity to take the ACT or SAT. Um, we also have the FAFSA um, that works with loans, grants, and work studies for students that apply. 
And then finally, our K-State Scholarship Network is something that students apply for every year to continue scholarships that might be specific to their major or specific to the university. So as you stay a student at K-State, your scholarship opportunities increase. But as you continue looking, I know I mentioned our admissions and scholarships here, but you can kind of see um, those requirements. Um, as I mentioned, we are both we are test optional for both admissions and um, scholarships. So um, we hope to see your application soon. We are also on the common application, um, but I want to make sure you stay connected. So we are offering both virtual and on campus visits throughout the year. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I'm your representative. So if you ever get a message from a guy who spells Chase weird, you know who I am. But please let me know how I can be a resource for you as you go throughout your um, college search process. But thanks and go Cats. All righty. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to a round robin uh, session starting back up at the top of the University of Illinois in Chicago. The question is going to be, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we're gonna start with UIC and make our way down the line. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, so I would say the college search during COVID is definitely a bit different. Um, so you typically just remotely can get a vibe from the campus by the campus admissions officers that you speak to. That's really going to speak powerfully to the campus. And then I would just say go with your comfort zone, even if you don't know your major or don't know exactly what you're doing quite yet. Sometimes knowing that the city has enough internships or student clubs or things like that, those are things and people that are gonna help you round that out and figure out yourself. So just kind of go with your comfort zone and do the best you can virtually is my advice. Awesome, thank you so much. And our next presenter, Pacific Lutheran University. Um, my advice is going to kind of echo the advice before me, um, but I really recommend to use your people. Um, if you know what you want to study, who do you know that's in that field or that's doing that job that you'd like? Um, where do the people that you look up to, where have they gone? Um, ask your parents, your counselor, your teachers. Uh, so really just, especially because this virtual world is crazy for getting tours and getting a feel for schools, uh, but just to ask everyone that you know where they went to school, what they recommend uh, to really, really utilize your community as you kind of start this search or even as you wrap it up. Perfect. Thank you. University of Alaska Anchorage. Everyone, my advice is to step outside of your comfort zone. University is an excellent time to try something new and it can be one of the few times in your life where you can really do something different and take an adventure. So now's the time. Awesome. And Eastern Washington University. Sure. I like to encourage students to use something a little bit more um, like tangible and um, it's to basically figure out what's most important to them in terms of uh, features at a school or characteristics. So this could be something like, you know, value, um, if like cost is the most important thing to them, uh, let's say opportunity, um, community could be another one, academics like programs, uh, location, just figure out basically what's important. And then just go through your list of schools that you're considering and actually like actually rank them, like write it down rank them and how they um, fit on like a one to five scale in each of those categories. And that usually will help um, you figure out what your short list should look like. And then you can kind of go from there. Awesome. Texas A&M. Howdy, yes. Um, I would definitely advise that you keep track of your calendar, you know, your due dates and whatnot. Um, also make a distinction between your skill set and your likes, you know. Um, and see what program best fits for your for your skill set, your personality, and what you would like to or see yourself doing. Um, you know, also visit campus, uh, talk to students. Um, don't just talk to um, uh, advisors and whatnot, but actually visit the offices of the program that you want to look into. Um, these people have great knowledge that they can share with you, and so will the students. I think as you get to know some of them, you'll get a feeling of whether that feels like home for you and in which ways it fits your personality, so. Great, thank you so much. And Kansas State University. 
Yeah, I would just echo what a lot of my uh, colleagues say, but um, the best thing for me uh, that I did during my college search process was visit um, institutions if possible, whether that be virtually or in person. I always joke that our job's easy. We get to tell you the reasons why we love our university, but you've really got to go and see for yourself and see if it's the best fit and see why you would like the institution. Awesome, thank you so much to everyone who presented this evening. And I just want to thank everyone for joining and watching and tuning in uh, to this college fair. There's going to be a quick four question survey once you close this window. So we would love for you to fill that out. And then if you would like to see any of the recordings from these sessions, you can do so within about a week at strivescan.com slash RMA CAC. Good luck on the college search process. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of the week. Take care.